Hello, this is a quick overview of the PayPal recurring payment system, which is ideal if you're a small business and you're wanting to bill people online using a secure system. And the great thing about PayPal is it acts as a debit card gateway system. So even if your client, your payee, doesn't have PayPal, it doesn't matter because you can just use this system as um as as a gateway and because paypal has built in ssl certificates you don't have to worry about the logistical side of things you can just set up your your products and services and you can bill your clients now what i'm talking about is recurring payments so that would be if you're billing them monthly or annually which is ideal if say for example you're in the web design business or you're you're doing you're offering recurring services of some kind uh, you could bill people monthly or annually and the thing is with PayPal they charge now let's see um, in the UK they have a fee system and it's 3.4 percent plus 20 pence surcharge okay so that means that if if you're charging the client a hundred pounds PayPal will take their cut let's do the maths very quickly then we'll move on to the, the PayPal a recurring payment system and how to set it up so let's go 0 0.034 that's 3.4 percent times 100 so we're finding out what 3.4 percent of 100 is it's three pound 40 add to that the 20 pence whoops add to that the 20 pence that's three pound 60 so we go a hundred minus three pounds sixty ninety six pounds forty so if if you bill someone a hundred pounds paypal takes their cut and you receive ninety six pounds forty a small price to pay for the convenience of the system i think anyway we'll be talking about the paypal recurring payment button the PayPal recurring payment email link and any problems that you might have with the email link and this is an interesting one because something happened to me the other day and I want to talk about it so let's go over to PayPal you need to log into PayPal they've got this whole new system which I hate I don't like it they've taken away control and I want access to the way it used to be so you scroll down and you click classic site and the page loads up you go to the top right and you click that cog icon and now we've got access to the old dashboard i've edited out a few of my details for security reasons i hope you can understand that what you need to do is click where it says paypal buttons here and manage my buttons click update and then these are the buttons that I've created. There's a few that I've made already and I'll be showing you those in a sec. But for the purposes of this demonstration, remember we're talking about the PayPal recurring payment button. You will click create new button and it loads up a page with options for creating a button. Now you can create whatever button you want, but we're talking about subscriptions, annually or monthly recurring or periodically recurring. So item name, let's say, it's just annual bill okay choose your currency you've got all these other options here so you can add uh, different pricing tiers for example if you I say you're in the website design business basic intermediate advanced you could add three different prices you can add drop down menus so it could be um, the same product but I don't know in a different color if for example you're I don't know, selling accessories or whatever and then add text field and there's other stuff you can do you can customize it quite a lot but we're not doing that we're just keeping it simple let's imagine you're billing someone 500 pounds a year remember paypal takes 3.4 percent plus 20p so factor that in let's say we're billing them once a year and we're never going to stop the cycle if it was a two-year contract we could say two if it was a three-year contract we could say three let's say never do you want to offer a trial period not today use my secure merchant ID or use my primary email address I always now this is when they when they receive the receipt by email for the payment they will see um, information from you I like to use my email address what you can do is if you've got an email inbox you could create a forwarder so rather than using info at 
blah 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 dot com it could be sales at your website dot com all you need to do is verify that new email ad email address within the uh, the PayPal system and then you can use it on receipts and it, it's 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 a, a nice touch I think now you can talk you can add your inventory options you can save the button I always recommend saving the button if you've got inventory so you're drop shipping or whatever you can track all of that but we're not doing that so we're not going to do that um, and then you can add uh, extra features now I like this bit because when I create a button I like to create custom pages so say for example someone's about to buy something but then for whatever reason they cancel you can actually create a custom page so it would be something like http whatever uh, com forward slash cancel and then they can go to a custom page i've got a success page which i set up so when people successfully complete the the payment they get this page payment success right I'm not going to create the button because I've already got buttons pre-created and I want to show you that very quickly the button I created was for um, a, a monthly advertising system that I've got running on a local business directory website and here it is it's a very simple website it, it's basically advertising local fast food restaurants it's a, a locally optimized directory which is very highly trafficked and uh, I've been running this for a few years and recently I started to uh, sell advertising for a monthly fee and I set up a, a, a subscription button and anybody who wants to buy an advert can subscribe and pay using the PayPal gateway system using their debit card so they don't have to have a PayPal system, a PayPal account. They can just use PayPal's gateway in order to pay. It's great. And when you create the button, you can you'll, you'll be given a piece of code, which you uh, which you can uh, embed. Okay, so that that's what it looks like. Now let me just go back to my saved buttons, and I'll show you. Edit button I'll just fly through this see so when you create your button this is this is the code as it gives you and what you do is you take that code I've already done it but I'll tell you what I'll do it again because there's something I want to show you actually I'm using the WordPress system for this by the way I don't know what system you're using but it's in principle it's all the same you just need to paste the the code for the button into your HTML editor oh come on WordPress what's what's the problem oh for goodness sake let me just pause this I'll be back in a sec okay I'm back sorry about that so let's call the page test and what we'll do is we'll go into the text editor paste in the code and that's what it looks like so you've pasted in the code we go visual th that's basically what it will look like and that's a drop down box okay and let's just publish this and we'll take a quick look at what the the button looks like on the website itself you can style the button you can put it inside like a, a div or something and style it with, uh, with CSS let's take a look and see what the button looks like yep that looks good yeah that's great awesome okay so that's the button and all the, all they have to do is click subscribe they click subscribe and they will be taken to this gateway page now I know it says log in it's trying to prompt you to log in but uh, you, you can ignore that you can make it clear to your clients that all they need to do is click pay by using debit or credit card and it will go to this uh, secure system where they enter their details solve the capture and click continue at, at which point they will receive uh, a receipt by email from PayPal telling them that their purchase was successful and remember you can set up uh, a success page so I've I've actually created a success page for this website so that's all good so the email link let's rewind and take it from the top and show you how to create the email link okay so go to the cog icon as we did before click selling preferences you're creating the button as you did previously only at the last 
the last step is a bit different so for the email link we go create button we go subscribe give it a name annual renewal subscription it could be a monthly subscription just as easily it's up to you I'm going to not, I'm not going to add anything else to it I'm just going to imagine that I'm I'm billing them say four let's say it's four hundred pounds annually so I click yeah that's all fine yeah 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 mm. save the button not bothered about tracking inventory or anything like that Customize. Do you, yeah, yeah. Do you need your customer's postal address? I'd say so. Um, if they cancel, take them to a special page that I've already uh, created. Same goes for the success page. So when they complete their transaction, having clicked the the link within the email and paid, they will then go to this. Uh, special page which is this page uh, you can add various uh, uh, extra HTML and overrides and things like that we don't need to worry about that go create button right this is the bit where instead of highlighting this code for the button as we did previously we click email and this is the link okay so you highlight that you copy it and you paste it into an email and send it to your recipient. It's not that straightforward though because, and I'll explain in a second what happens. What I did originally was I did a little test where I emailed the link to myself. Okay, I emailed it to myself and in the email everything was fine. You click the button and it goes to the payment system and the client clicks debit or credit card so that all seems fine I sent the link to my client and he replied and he said hi Darren I've just clicked on your PayPal link and it just keeps coming up with an error not sure what to do Stuart I thought really that's odd and I looked at the link can you see that bit there you know where it, just where it says hosted just before that, that's the ampersand. That is like, that's the, this, the and, right? If I hover my mouse over this link, and we look at the link, it says HTTPS, which means secure, forward slash forward slash dub 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 dot paypal dot com forward slash CGI hyphen bin web source query CMD equals underscore blah blah blah. Click ampersand and then AMP semicolon now that is the HTML representation of the ampersand what now my email I've, in my email I've not passed the link correctly and it's inserted the HTML representation of the the ampersand which is technically correct by HTML standards but technically a nuisance for me because when I when my client clicks this link it generates an error error detected some information is missing or incomplete that's a nuisance you see what you need to do is let's just send an email to myself um, and let's just call it test PayPal email link when you add this link you can go control V or paste that's fine if you send that as is that will automatically become a HTML link but it will be it will be correctly passed by HTML standards but it will be wrong because it will insert that when the client clicks the link so what you need to do is you need to deliberately make sure that you insert the correct version of the link now it's tried to automatically insert the link for me and let's have a look there's the culprit there it is it's trying to insert AMP semicolon 
which is nonsense. We don't want that. We delete that, get rid of that. And the title is just like, well, it doesn't matter, but that's not anything. But we'll just delete the AMP colon from that as well and then go insert. OK, so I'm going to send that now. OK, open up the email and there it is. And if I click that, it's successfully done it. There we go. You see, so just be careful with PayPal buttons. If you're using, if you're trying to convert the button into an email link to send on to your client, don't make that mistake because it's a broken link. Uh, you've got to be careful as someone else's supplier because you're just irritating them if if you if you don't get this right. And if you are using um, this system, I recommend that you create a YouTube video explaining to the client how it works. I don't mean do what I've just done, but what I'm saying is create a three minute video telling the client what to expect, that they need to click on the link, that they need to enter the details, and after that they will receive uh, a, a PayPal receipt and further instructions so you can deliver the product or service to them. And I've actually done that. And I've put together this page explaining to the client what they can expect and showing that they'll be sent a link by email if they want to pay by email. Thanks for watching anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any problems or questions, let me know. If you find anything out about this PayPal system, the recurring uh, debit card system, let me know in the comments. Um, because I like talking about these things. If I can avert disaster, then please let me know. And uh, any tips that you've got, that would be great as well. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.